uh, Signature Morning, uh, Signature Television. Um, earlier we spoke to you about the NEW State budget. Uh, so we're going to actually have that conversation a little later, but we'll com communicate with you uh, when that happens. But we're switching gears with some other conversation we'll be having this morning. I'm sure you must have heard from the papers that some workers in certain states, we heard Cross River, Nasarawa, Ebonyi, and Kaduna states, and uh, are actually on strike because of the minimum wage saga. Um, it's quite curious because, again, for a Boeing State, a Boeing State governor had announced 75,000 naira minimum wage. And it does look like that was not the practice, uh, something around the neighborhood of consequential adjustments. And that's also the same thing that's going on in Kaduna State. I mean, these are states that have announced, except for Cross River State, these are states that have announced 70,000 naira, some 75,000 naira. And one wonders really. Why is NLC not doing strike across board? Why have they selected certain states to go on strike uh, on? And is there a, a difference? Is there something there? That's exactly what we're going to be t discussing this morning. We have with us Mr. Emeka Asogwa. Good to have you. Ben Good morning. Ben oh, sorry, Ben Asogwa. <laughs> Good to Good have morning, you. Good morning, Mr. Ben. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. How do you do? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? We're good. We're good. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, this adjustments that's going on, because some of the states that workers have embarked upon the strike, it does look to me like those states have announced a certain amount, which is above the minimum wage that by the federal government. What's the difference between that and other states that also have announced and also have implemented? All right, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, minimum wage, it has laws and it has rules as well. And um, when we talk about the minimum wage law, it only tells you the minimum, the least amount you can pay. It doesn't tell you the maximum. You can choose any maximum you, you'll be able to afford. But when you talk about uh, uh, that minimum wage, it's not just a matter of saying you will pay uh, this particular amount. But we must do consequential adjustment. There's what we call relativity. For instance, if you are on level one and I'm on level 16, there is a relationship, there is relativity. For instance, if you're on level one and I'm on level 16 and you on level one have been earning 30,000 while I earn maybe 150,000. I'm just keep making, uh, pick, picking a picture here. And we've now changed, we've transited from minimum wage of 30,000 naira to 70,000. If government wants to implement, if the employer of labor wants to implement this 70,000 naira, that means that you that you, you were earning 30,000 before, you can now earn not less than that 70,000. And there was a relationship between 30,000 naira and uh, 150,000. You can find the percentage gap. It is expected that by the time your own is coming up to 70,000, my own should shift in consequential condition with what it was. Take for instance, if the increase from 70,000, from 30,000 is 70,000 uh, to 70,000, if the increase is maybe 133% or 134%, it's expected that my own should increase within that range of percentage, even if not exactly that percentage, it should be at a percentage that will not deviate so much from the relativity. So implementation of minimum wage is different from wage award. If you want to give workers wage award, you can mention a particular amount and that amount, for instance, when federal government was uh, giving wage award, they gave 35,000 naira. That wasn't negotiated on the um, method of implementation because that is what I want. You give everybody, both the lowest and the highest, the same amount. Any good state also approved uh, 25,000 naira for state workers and 10,000 naira from uh, for local government workers from December 2023 and started paying same. And nobody came to contest the implementation on whether Mr. A should take 25, another person more than 25. No, that was wage award. But now when we talk about minimum wage, you don't just sit down and add outright amount and think you've implemented it. No, it must have a chart and the chart must also maintain the 
uh, relativity. The structural features bef uh, before the implementation. So, so that you don't just get up because what is happening now is that some of them will just come and sit down and feel okay, 75,000. I will look at the least person, maybe the least person is 30,000. My, my, what I have to do is to add 45,000 to the least person, and that is 75,000. So, every other person takes 45,000. No, is that what has happened in this that state? That has happened in many states, even in Enugu here. The only reason, because you were talking about selectivity, no. The only reason is like that is that in some other states there is discussion on how to handle it. For some other governors, they feel they have arrived, they have done it, uh, whether you like it or not, take it that way. No. You know, sometimes people give interpretation to the law according to their own desire. But the rule applies even beyond what you think. It has to be done the right way. So you don't expect that when you add... 70 uh, when you add maybe 40,000 naira to make 30,000 naira come up to 70, you add the same amount for everybody. Some of them uh, they are anchoring on what is happening with the federal level because federal government is paying 40,000 naira cross board, but they are doing it because they said that their IPs needed to be reformatted or restructured in such a way that it can now have a different structure. Already they have slurry charts. This large church is already known to workers. And based on that, we know that the, uh, the, the, the difference must be paid as an arrears. By the time the structure, the building that church to the payment platform. Okay, let's start with the minister's speech. The minister for labor had said that he's not responsible for job creation. I want the speech that he made, does that portray true leadership being a minister? You know, I don't know if he said he's not responsible for job creation or he's not responsible for employment. You know, there, there, there may be, there, there may be a, a little gap between the two, job creation and employment. employment. You may not be directly responsible for employing Mr. A and B. But when you talk about job creation, if the minister is saying that he's not responsible for job creation, he should not go back to read the mandate of the ministry. Because if you understand the ministry's mandate, it includes job creation. In fact, it's one of the center points of that ministry. In fact, uh, NDE, National Directorate of Employment, National Directorate of Employment, NDE, is an agency under Ministry of Labor. So if he's saying that he has nothing to do with that, that is not part of his mandate, then why is that agency under the Ministry of Labor? And when you look at the name, Ministry of Labor and Employment, you cannot have such a name on, on your head and still say that you have no responsibility as regards employment. In the first place, the mandate of Ministry of Labor expands from the point of creating an enabling environment, like he mentioned, to creating job opportunities. That is what we call job creation. And also, uh, capacity building for for instance somebody can graduate from school but doesn't have certain capacities needed for employment it's the duty of ministry of labor and employment to make nigerian youth employable by building them even for self-employment and uh, government employment so it mustn't be practically for uh, a white collar job as we call it you know we normally call uh, government job white collar job but uh, it has to it expands beyond that so if he's talking about not being responsible for job creation that means he didn't really uh, understand what he's there for because as minister it is a direct responsibility to create job opportunities it is a, a, a direct responsibility to also uh, 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 produce uh, employment policies and ensure the implementation of these policies by both uh, public and private sector organizations. So the responsibility is not just to answer minister. The, the responsibility is not just to adjudicate between uh, employees and employers. No, he has said that he, what he, he is, should be doing is providing the environment, the enabling environment for businesses to thrive. And do you think he has done it? 
That is the question. Because if he says this is his responsibility, let's not even debate which one is his responsibility. That one he claims to be his own. What has he done there? What kind of enabling environment have they created? As a minister, can he come out boldly to tell Nigerians the level of enabling environment? He has to explain it. Enabling environment also includes building a structure where SMEs can thrive. Building a structure where somebody that has good ideology on what to do can build on, can also start from. For instance, if I'm a graduate and I, I know how uh, I know much about maybe fashion and designing, Ministry of Labour and Employment should be able to provide an environment where even if I don't have the means, I can assess something. What has that ministry done for us? In fact, it's unfortunate that if you go to his ministry, you may not get a clear record of the unemployed youth in Nigeria and their qualifications. Why is it supposed to be the responsibility of that ministry? Ministry of Labour and Employment is supposed to have up-to-date data of Nigerian graduates who are yet to be employed. Unemployed ones, their fields of training, their capacities, and the possible challenges that may face them if they get employed. Then they also have to know those who are underemployed. Because it's one thing to say that somebody is employed and it's another thing to employ them properly. The ministry should also know those who are wrongly employed. There are people who are wrongly employed. And that one is common in Nigeria. Because when you see somebody that read a particular course, maybe you finish wasting your time in the university saying you are reading, maybe you are reading uh, botany. At the end of the day, there is no job elsewhere except one office work like that, where you work as a clerk. Mm. You now ask the relationship between this <laughs> course and what the person is doing. Mm. The same person that says it creates an enabling environment. Is it an, an uh, environment for keke riding? Because that has become the only job for the Nigerian youths. Is this environment for POS job? Is that the environment he has created for Nigerian youths? Because I don't even understand what he meant by creating an enabling environment. That also records him low. Because they have not done any fantastic job. And I want to say one thing. When you are creating jobs, you must create sustain sustainable jobs. Not for you to come up and say you are giving 30,000 naira for three months. Just providing a conduit for diversion of funds. That is why I see it. Because this is an unemployed youth. You said you are going to pay 30,000. At the end of the day, you may not even pay up to 5% of the unemployed that money, the money. And even the people you are paying the money, what is it for? If you pay him for three months, you pay 30,000. Is it for him to save the money and use it as for business outreach or what? <laughs> I don't understand. Or for him to eat, use the money to eat for thirty, um, for um, ninety days, maybe three months. Even if he succeeds getting the money, and afterwards, what happens? He will go back to become to becoming jobless again. So, so sometimes when they create jobs, they create useless jobs because the environment they create is what we are yet to understand. Are they creating an enabling environment when, he, as a minister? They've not even come to terms with the fact that there are so many factors mitigating against even private organizations. Because as a ministry, they're supposed to have clear data and conditions that must be met for even businesses to thrive. And they should not be the ones to project it. At the, at the time, that ministry was even answering productivity. They had productivity in their job, whatever. And it's still part of what they should be looking at. So when we talk about productivity, what do they do about it? What performance index do they use to monitor the activities? You know, so what I've seen in Nigeria is that we put square pegs in round holes. It can never fit in. So some of them do not understand the integrities of what they are there to do. And that is why they get confused. And that is why they become even more unproductive than the people they are monitoring. Mm. So, because as for me, it's not even a question of what he has accepted as a responsibility and what he hasn't accepted. The ones he has accepted, he has done almost nothing. That is it. Because this is a government that promised 
to create millions of jobs. I don't know the number of jobs they have created. The fact that people are losing their jobs because private organizations are folding because of the uh, uh, difficult environment, the difficult terrain. Even the electricity supply in this country is going down. Infrastructure going down. Network, road networks are, is an issue. Security is an issue. All these things have made some organizations to wind down. Even in the past one year, we know the, we may not have, have a good record of the number of firms, number of private organizations, foreign ones for that matter, that are folded. Then, let alone mentioning local businesses that have hands off because of difficulty in uh, continuing. And when you do that, you just know that people are losing their jobs. So he has actually, he has practically done nothing significant. Let me not say he has done nothing because at least he presents himself as a minister. <laughs> so that, that, that is it. So for me, so, he hasn't done anything. So what are the specific responsibility fall under the Labour Minister's mandate if job creation is not part of it? That is a question because job creation is a center point. When you talk about labor and employment, and uh, I give it to him that uh, job creation is uh, a wide thing and does not just have to do with uh, somebody coming to sum submit application to you and you employ him. If I were him, I, I would have gone ahead to explain w where it doesn't directly involve them. For instance, the issue of bringing application for employment, it doesn't mean that anybody that has to be employed must go through Ministry of Labor. No, that one I we accept. But the point there is that they have some other responsibilities, but they are secondary to job creation. If he understands what ministry, the ministry stands for. Job creation is one of the aspects. Because if it's even when you cre create an enabling environment for these jobs, and how do you create jobs? As a ministry, they should have a good data of what bringing a minister, uh, maybe uh, an, uh, an industry into the country will imply in terms of job opportunities for Nigerians. And that is how they will encourage government to ensure that so, uh, this uh, a particular company or companies are brought in. That is part of their job. So, yes, the other aspect of a uh, job has to do with uh, ensuring a good, uh, good harmony between employers and employees. But in most cases, they even stand as the employers mm. that is the problem but ordinarily the ministry of labor is supposed to be there as a mediator between the employers and employees even if it's government government and the workers like government workers the ministry of labor should stand out but in most cases you see ministry of labor coming as the government that oppresses instead of having the role of ensuring harmony and that is why they've lost it because when the minister talks it's supposed to be that Daniel has come to judgment. But they have the, minister, the subsequent ministers we've had in the country have even turned to be the most difficult oppressors we have. So, they have other rules, but job creation is at the center of it. So, um, when he, if he's talking about uh, providing a uh, enabling environment, providing an enabling environment is part of job creation. Right. So, I, I mean, I want to take, take us back a little bit to what you said earlier about the minimum wage thing um you said that you, by giving your example thirty thousand naira minimum wage is if it's increased to seventy thousand naira it's more like a hundred and thirty three percent increase that other people who receive above that what they receive is just the difference between that's thirty thousand naira and seventy thousand naira which is just forty thousand naira that's what you said that is not what they're supposed to receive that is what no. i i said that is what the, some of the, that's the, what the, most the states governors have done have done which which, which you are saying it is not supposed to, to be the, so a uh, right way of implementing okay so what's wage. the right way to make minimum the right wage. way to implement minimum wage i wish we have a board here and i will start demonstrating <laughs> it. At least let me explain mm. if for instance we are looking at seventy thousand dollar minimum wage when i'm transiting from thirty thousand dollar to seventy Mm -hmm. The first thing you do is to find the percentage increase mm -hmm. from okay. the baseline, 133%, which is about 133 point something or mm -hmm. 134. Mm -hmm. When you get it, if I get to somebody whose salary is 100,000, mm -hmm. if I must implement it the ideal way, it has to reflect 200. that percentage increase. That's, that's over 200,000. This is 100,000 naira. It should be more over than 230,000. Yeah. Okay. And if for whatever reason, 
I feel that that may not be implementable. You can trim down by reducing the percentage increase, but not just coming to add 40,000 for him. Hmm. For instance, I can decide that since the other one is 133 percent, uh, percent the apex person may be receiving 100 percent okay. or 110 percent. Okay. okay. So, what, the so what, what is obtainable now is that some what governors. What is obtainable in most states? Yes. Because some states did the consequential adjustment properly. Some states did pro properly. Yes. Okay. But what is happening in some states? And when I mentioned, I said, including here, including Enugu. Enugu, yes, is that they outrightly added 40, the difference, 40,000 40, 40, naira. For instance, Enugu declared uh, 80,000 naira minimum wage. Yes. So about two other states, like uh, Lagos and um, 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 River State, declared 85,000 naira. Yes. That doesn't mean adding um, 50,000 50, and 55,000. No, it doesn't mean that. When you bring... 50,000 naira to 30,000 is about 166.67 percent or just 166 percent take it that way mm. if it's not 166 percent that means that that person has any 100,000 as the apex person i'm just trying to demonstrate something i know it's not exactly yeah. what i'm saying yeah that person that earns 166 and um, earns 100,000 you are now looking at 166 percent of it increase but if for any reason you think you cannot increase Rich. it exactly that way the percentage reduction should not be abysmal and in this case even if i decide to reduce the percentage by 100 that means that this person any that is only 100,000 should earn 200,000 even if i make it 100 percent very minimum but in that case you are not adding just 50,000 to him mm. Okay. Then there is another thing there. In, in the uh, uh, civil service system, a deputy director is entitled to one domestic servant. Mm. A director is entitled to two domestic servants. These domestic servants, in those days, were employed and given to them. But later on, it became a monetized thing where you pay the deputy director and the director that mo the money they and they'll pay and they'll pay employ. Because, okay but when you are not paying them when you are not paying through these uh, directors you pay in accordance with the minimum wage you've declared okay which implies that if i'm in the position of a director and my you are paying me sixty thousand naira for two domestic servants as per minimum wage of 30 30,000 now that you've changed it to 70,000 or 80,000 or 85 the minimum wage you are going to pay for this domestic servant will be in accordance with the new minimum wage mm. true so and in that case the idea thing there is that it's level three step eight that is the standard for these deputy directors, domestic servants, and directors, deputies, uh, domestic servants, which implies that when you work out the charts, whatever is on level three, step eight, should now apply to these de deputy directors and directors. If I have one, it means one full salary of level eight, uh, uh, sorry, level three, step eight. If I'm a director, it should be two full salaries of level three, step eight for mm -hmm. domestic servants. But when they were adding, when these people were adding, that doing this direct addition, they just added for uh, per head, forgetting this domestic servants aspect. That is another issue there. Mm. So when you look at this, it's just more like trying to shortchange us the more. Even the minimum wage we accepted, the seventy thousand naira, wasn't exactly what workers Propose. uh, proposed. You remember we got to 250,000 naira and stopped and said it must be that. You can imagine the gap between 70,000 and 250,000. A wide gap. Very wide. Yeah, but uh, again, in the papers today, I, I heard the NRC president saying that this December, before January starts, in fact, that they are going to start asking for a new minimum wage again. Anyway, uh, that one, by, by virtue of the law, a new minimum wage will come in 2027 judging by the fact that it is a three-year thing mm -hmm. so we are in 2024 
So when 2024 is gone, 2025, 2026. 2020. Then this 2024. Mm. We have 2025, 26. By 27. The 2027, April 2027, this minimum wage would have expired. Okay. So you can start asking from December against 2027. <laughs> that is not an issue. <laughs> but the summary there is that by virtue of the law, which has already been signed mm. as new minimum wage law, it, it cannot be it, touched. It, you cannot change it again until three years. Which is now with all the suffering, with all the suffering that's going on. You can do any other thing. For instance, that was what delayed the negotiation for minimum wage when the president came in in the month of May 2023 and declared the removal of fierce subsidy. And that changed the economic indices of the country. We could not demand for new minimum wage immediately because the law did not say accept. The mm. law says it shall be for a lifespan of five years. Mm. And when the law says it that way, it, didn't, it doesn't give, that doesn't give you room to begin to bring in some of that sentiment. And that was why we went to the doctrine of necessity to bring in the issue of wage award. Okay. You see, wage award is not um, part of a labor law, and I mean, minimum wage law. But it was brought into cushion the level of suffering. So, and that was also one of the reasons we had to insist on reducing the lifespan of minimum wage from five years to three, to three years, years, knowing that the level of e the economy, the speed with which our economy changes is such that if you wait for another five years, people would have uh, been fried up before then. So we reduce it to three years. Three years. But if there, if need be, you can adopt the measures of uh, wage award or some other palliatives. Yeah, because, uh, uh, because you you mentioned the last time we were here that the, the agreement you guys had with the government is not the same thing and that they have gone beyond over and above the agreements you people had you you this they said that it was um um the president said if you say 250 then i could increase the field to any any amount i want and you yes, people said no and when we did, yes it was one of the reasons our people accepted Seventy thousand, because yeah. when you are doing a negotiation, you consider so many factors. Yes, the value of money is what you can do with it. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so we well, look. But at when, it from when that, that trust has been broken by the government you negotiated, do, do you have to wait on the twenty twenty seven to ask for what is? Because before then, what about people who earn that amount? Before then, what was going to happen to them? That is the problem we have when we you, you have uh, people that do not even consider the people they lead, and they do not have respect for the law, because. Um, unfortunately, that uh, part of negotiation was more of sentimental, in the sense that it wasn't inputted in the law. The law did, uh, did not say, uh, because we have agreed on 70,000 naira as a new minimum wage, government shall not increase fair price. You see where they got us? Mm. Because it was more like a statement made on the negotiation table, but never part of the law. Mm. So, because it wasn't part of the law, breaking it is quite easier. So, is that bound? Does that law also bound the NLC to not to ask for new minimum wage? No. Let me tell you, we, you know, the law is made for man and not man for the law. Mm -hmm. The organized labor, both trade union congress and TUC, we have the uh, what we have the right to say no. Though this law was made, but look at the situation. T yes. And we'll begin to reconsider. But that means you have to come back to touch the law again. But what I'm just saying is that speaking from the perspective of the law, from the eyes of the law, the way it is today, our next new minimum wage will be in three years' time. Wow. That is specific because the law says so. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we cannot make more demands, including the quest for a review of the law and minimum wage. Okay. That doesn't mean that if no, no law is cast on stone. So if you find out that the law you made is choking you, you have no option than to review it. That is not impossible. But the summary there is that what we are on now, what we are doing now. In fact, we had a National Executive Council meeting last week and we were all directed at TUC level that any state that fails to comply with this new minimum wage and to comply the right way, go back to your state and declare strike action immediately. It was a direct other and the only thing that is holding some states is that they, we still want to get it done the right way without issue of casualties because anytime we go on strike there will always be casualties. casualties for instance 
if you have something a business to do where government must endorse something it means that that business will wait until we finish the strike so it's not some people do not understand it if you have anything let me say you are a, you are a builder you applied for a building permit or whatever permit and we are now on strike nobody will touch it nobody will sign it until we finish mm. no matter what so and when we look at all those things we know quite well that if government allows for proper negotiation it helps better and uh, that is why even in other states where it was implemented wrongly it has already been passed as a, a request for review so and if you have they fail to review you see the strike spreading mm -hmm. the strike just started if care is not taken it will spread to other states because other states are still on it and the directive is a continuous directive until every state does the right thing okay and so it will it may get to a point where the number of states on strike will start reducing when they begin to comply mm. but i don't even see any reason that a governor should say that he will not pay the money properly well we didn't agree on an amount that is so ambiguous it is an amount that even when you pay it you still wonder how the survive. people will manage survive. that is just the truth it means that if i work for a whole month as a junior worker my work cannot the whole month work cannot stand before a bag of rice mm. Mm. because a bag of rice is quite costlier mm. than the mo monthly minimum wage. Uh, minimum wage so and when you look at it from that perspective you come to understand that we we, we we are in a situation where the governor should even be sympathizing with workers to the extent that you don't need to be compelled if we say you didn't pay it right way the question should be hey where how are we supposed to do it and you adjust it properly mm. because even when you do this proper adjustment at the end of the day does it even look like what will make one feel buoyant not at all but anyway you said anyway is not complying to the way and manner that you issue should be or even something close why are you not adding any good to the strike if you try to take the list anyway was mentioned there and the only reason yes anyway is in the list the only reason we are not on strike yet is that you know when the minimum wage was prepared and paid the way it was paid we now wrote to the governor and gave we said they sent a letter to him he wasn't in the country and because he was not in the country we allowed him to come back he said we'll address it. we're hoping for him to address it i hope you're getting me we are not troublemakers yeah be, because, because most states we are partners most, most states you mentioned and most the, states are, are not the, doing it and when we know if we know that you have human feelings if we know that you understand us we'll not come fighting we know quite well that the governor has always listened to us take for instance when the issue of wage award came he didn't take fighting before he approved that wage award most states that started wage award were stopped just after paying for a few months even federal government that started the thirty five thousand dollar wage award we kept fighting for them to pay i hope you're getting mm. it and when the governor declared his own wage award he said i will continue paying until we transit to minimum wage mm. he has paid it even longer than federal government because federal government said it was going to last for six months and uh, the six months has been full of battles but he declared this in uh, um december started paying since december 2023 and uh, paid till uh, this uh, um, october in november they down paid this minimum wage which we don't see as minimum wage because it added money directly mm -hmm. so by way of conscience and good understanding the first thing will not be to just say we're now going on strike having seen that he listens to us it's now when he says no i will not address it that is when the issue will come up but so long as he's ready to address it and pay as we talk we already have our own charts because we went back and prepared the charts the way it should be since the government could not prepare the chart the way it should be we now prepared it we didn't go too flamboyant we just did it in such a way that government can easily implement it and implement it at least close to the right way okay earlier you said that job creation job creation uh, the minister's duty is to create an enabling environment so considering the insecurity rates in the country now do you think that this enabling environment has been established enough for investors to come in and work with us 
In fact, what I can say is that even the enabling environment we had before is disappearing. <laughs> that is also the thing. Forget about establishing which one has even the ones that we established before are no more there. The security is one major aspect of an enabling environment. If you talk about enabling environment, let me tell you, many Nigerian youths, if you remember when Buhari came in and began to hammer on agriculture, many Nigerian youths keyed into it on their own. Even when government did not have a uh, loan to give to them, many of them started doing it their own way. Some ran into the bush. Some other people went and learned how to do fishery and all, all the stuff. But you know that farming is not something you do in the city majorly. Mm -mm. It's always done in the bush. When they now discovered that if you go into the bush, it's either you did not come back or, you, or you, your people will start pricing you with kidnappers as if you're a goat. They had to run back, run back to the city again. And became jobless mm. the more so i can tell you for sure that if we had good security in nigeria even this food shortage we have wouldn't happen there because even as a worker I'm pe i have the right to to go into agriculture i can go down to nike there to ask for a portion of land and reach agreement with the community every saturday i will go down and cultivate from there garlic can come out for the family but this, with this level of insecurity, you can't even try it. So I know quite well that when the minister was talking about enabling environment, he didn't understand what enabling environment is. Because if enabling environment is something to go by and something he has good understanding of, he should have known that that is where the issue lies, that there is completely no enabling environment. One of the enabling environments we should talk about is good road network. So that we can reach different places. What uh, what is the nature of our road networks in Nigeria? Terrible. So there are so many factors. Then another aspect is electricity supply power. So that if you are running business here, you have sufficient power. But when you want to run any, no matter the, uh, how little that business is in Nigeria, you must have alternative power. You must go and buy generator and buy fuel at this cost that they are selling it. So looking at all this, there is no enabling environment. For even, in fact, even those that are working are, are not seeing the environment to survive, let alone the jobless ones. So there is no enabling environment there. The environment we had was before, not now. And it's quick disappearing. So it's really a, a difficult situation for Nigerians. But for the labor right now, because at the time that you guys requested for 250,000 naira minimum wage, we, we haven't had this situation of fuel pump price removing the total removal of subsidy. How much do you think now is an oh, average you as you should? We haven't had what? The entire um, subsidy has not been removed. At no, the time it you was the removal of fuel subsidy that even made us start agitating before. No, the, the, the removal was partially done. And it, you remember that fuel was at some point 600. Move for sets to 700 and then to, to this particular one. So at that time, full hasn't the, the entire subsidy has not been removed. It at least this one is the full. And when the president didn't say that it was partially done, he said fair subsidy is gone. <laughs> and immediately he said, You know, what they didn't understand mm -hmm. is that all those things, for instance, for the fact that you removed subsidy without building your refineries, mm -hmm. you will depend on the international market and even exchange rate. One of the reasons the thing went up was that mm -hmm. exchange rate became wider. The gap between naira and dollar widened, mm. and if you look at it from the international market perspective, you you get the crude and take outside and then import it like uh, uh, an end user that doesn't produce. So, and as you are importing, you are importing at foreign currency level. That was one of the reasons it moved from that five hundred six hundred naira to uh, one thousand plus. Mm. So, and. Um, the summary is that when they, he removed subsidy, he didn't remove partially. That was why he told us they had, uh, they had, they were saving money, that they yeah. had saved, saved trillions, that the removal is not already yielding, and we we we, we expected up to date accounts of the money they have saved. Rather, we kept borrowing. So the demand for fair uh, for minimum wage was already. Uh, on the premises that the new minimum wage had expired and also the removal of fair subsidy. That was why we jumped from 30,000 naira to make a demand of 600 and something uh, thousand. Uh, 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 something thousand. So what as it stands now, how much do you think is, is, should be an, an average minimum wage for a Nigerian worker as it stands? 
In fact, as it stands, mm. for a Nigerian to survive, mm. even the least person, you don't need anything less than 300,000. That is just the truth. Mm. If you must survive as a human being, you know what makes us survive is that we've learned to survive at all costs. I, I'm telling you, otherwise, when you look at it practically, to survive in Nigeria, going by the economic situation, you need nothing less than 300,000, even as a, a, a low person. Because when you check the cost of transportation, the cost of feeding, sometimes when I sit down, I wonder how we survive. Absolutely. Because what you hold in your hand as money is nothing but peanuts compared to the cost of living. True. So uh, that is just a situation that we are t debating 70,000 naira minimum wage and this implementation is something painful. Absolutely. It, because it is not related, it's not relatively. Co it's not compatible with the economic situation. Not Absolutely. at all. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're very right. Even in South Africa, I mean, with just around 60 million people, the minimum wage there is 380,000 in terms of Nigerian. Uh, and the, the oil there is fully deregulated. You know, you buy at the market supply and, and, and they don't have oil. They, they, are, they have gold. But we have it. And we are, <laughs> we are even paying, you know, much more. Anyway. Uh, Comrade Ben, thank you so much for your time. We truly appreciate thank your you insights so on this thank program today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, we're back shortly after this. Just so stay with us.